times. <laughs> so, uh, so this is one of yours? Yeah. This is one of the um, things I've uh, packed from a mini POV kit. Oh. And this hot glue gun is not... Uh, not sufficiently hot? Maybe that's hot. Oh, that one's got to be on. Yep. Huh. Okay. So we got to wait for it to heat up. So, Mitch, tell me a little <laughs> bit about all these neat projects that you've been doing. Well, I've been working on lots of different projects. Uh, the uh, I'm really tired right now I after a, this is like quite a weekend. couple days of setting up and then doing the Maker Fair. But oh man, it's been so worth it. It's been really fun. There's been so many people coming through here who uh, me and a bunch of friends uh, have taught to solder and build things. Um, um, you know, Ken, the blinky bug guy, and Jimmy, the open heart guy, and my friend Bobby from the SF Microcontroller Club. We all really love inspiring people to make things. Because we figure if we can teach people to make some of these projects that are very easy to make, that they'll gain confidence and want to make things on their own. Because if, um, you know, if if we don't make things on our own, then we're stuck with just whatever corporations want to give us. And there's a lot of cool things that corporations can give us, but it's rather limiting. If we make our own things, we can make whatever we want. If we can imagine it, we can make it. So that's what I really love inspiring in people. And I guess it does work because uh, at other workshops I've given at Maker Fairs and hacker conferences and community groups and schools, people have come up to me later and have actually said, you know, I really love making that. I bought other kits and uh, I bought a solder iron and now I'm just hooked on this. And that's what I really like is giving people the hardware bug and hooking them on something that's worthwhile. So my first project um, that's the most popular with this kind of group is TV Be Gone, mm -hmm. which that's, is... Uh, uh, over here on the table, right? Yeah, here's a kit version of it. Mm -hmm. This um, it has a little microcontroller and I programmed it with uh, the most popular 44 um, off codes for every TV. <laughs> and I point them, uh, put those codes out on um, infrared emitters. That's the way all remote controls work. It just pulses invisible light at the TV. I got rid of all those extraneous buttons that are totally unnecessary on TV remotes, you know, like up channel, down channel, and just left off. Because that's the only one you need, right? So I say off in every TV language out there and the TV in front of you turns off. And in this one, it's the couple batteries. Um, it, uh, it works at 100, 150 feet away. So I put that in um, my... Yeah, so this is actually the TV Be Gone Pro. <laughs> so this is for professionals only. However, you can try it at home. So it might look vaguely familiar to some people, but uh, it uh, has eight emitters, if you can see that in there. And when you turn it on, it, it very, very brightly shines infrared pulses for off in every TV language. And this goes up to 100 meters away. Yeah. So I like uh, TV Be Gone for many things. For one thing, I just don't like TV in public places. And it turns out that most people really don't either. So when I turn them off, the world becomes a little more peaceful and people start communicating or reading or writing or other human activities rather than drooling. So uh, I like inspiring that in the world and it all started with uh, TV Be Gone, uh, the original, which is a keychain that uh, you can carry with you anywhere oh, you go. That was a couple of years ago, right? It's actually four years ago now, so amazingly enough. Uh, today's the anniversary, the four year anniversary of TV Be Gone. So. <laughs> <sighs> it's been quite a trip, and uh, that's propelled me on uh, to do a life I really love. And uh, I actually had an experiment where I took a year to uh, explore what it might be that I really love in my life. So I quit doing the consulting work that I'd been doing, lived off savings for a year. I live very, rather inexpensively. And uh, I just explored what it is I love. And I knew I loved volunteering, so I started doing that. And I stopped doing a lot of the consulting work because I liked it but didn't love it. And uh, I started working on projects that had been languishing because I didn't have enough energy because I'd been working with electronics, so I didn't play enough with it. So TV Be Gone was the one thing that got on a roll, and uh, it turned out to be what I make a living on. 
you know, I don't get rich, but I get enough to eat and pay rent and do what I want to do and travel to maker fairs. And I love this. And if uh, it sustains me doing what I love, I'm doing the right thing. Mm. So other people can do that too. Yeah. What are some <laughs> of these other kits you got? The other things I got, well, here's one I did for the last maker fair. It's, um, we call it Minionette Game Kit. There was another open source project called Minion Game Kit. And that means uh, cute in French. And uh, so Minionette is, uh, you know, cutie or something like that. And uh, this is very easy for anyone to build. And it has a game library that anyone can use to make their own games, even if you don't know programming. So you turn it on. This one was uh, programmed by a 13-year-old who liked our game. And he made something which he calls Attack, very much like the original uh, arcade game Attack. Oop, I lost. <laughs> <laughs> He's much better at it than I'll ever be. So that's, that's Mignonette. Another thing is um, Brain Machine. This is actually the first sample of a manufactured version of the Brain Machine. The Brain Machine was originally a do-it-yourself kit, and that's what a lot of people here over the weekend at the Maker Fair have been working on. Um, probably over 100 people built Brain Machines here this weekend. Uh, it's a do-it-yourself project. It blinks lights and pulses sound at brainwave frequencies and your brain synchronizes to those frequencies and in this case those frequencies bring you to a really nice meditative state very relaxing and wonderful and along the way what makes it super fun is you hallucinate colors and patterns from your subconscious mind and it turns out people like hallucinating so I, I had two motivations for this one is I want to inspire people to make things this was intriguing enough that um, people could make it even if they've never made anything before, and it's easy enough to make even if you've never made anything before, and succeed in less than an afternoon. So um, it's been very successful. It's been Make Magazine's one of their most popular projects, which is why I thought, well, maybe there'd be a bunch of people out there who would want to um, try it out for themselves, who don't have the time or energy or want to make it themselves. I encourage people to. It's an open source. You can order all the parts online wherever you want and do it yourself, but. If you don't want to, I'll have it available for the Christmas buying season. So, <laughs> um, Give them a gift they'll never forget. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. Yeah. So my latest project, which I worked out for um, uh, the fair here, uh, is this. I call it trippy RGB waves. The battery's going a little dead here, so you don't see the blue too well. But uh, it has red, green, and blue all in there. The red, the green, and the blue mix together as I fade them in and out with a little microcontroller. And uh, it just does this trippy color sequence. And that's all it does when it's sitting on its own. But if you wave your hand over it, then it starts the sequence over. If you have a whole table full of them, then you see waves of color following your hand. And uh, I came up with this idea when I was artist in residence at um, AS220, an artist space in Providence, Rhode Island, which uh, exists also to educate people. Cool place. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's just great the way uh, people and organizations can inspire other people to do cool things, you know, as they see fit. So we all see what's cool in our own way rather than being marketed to to be told what's cool. And that's a big difference. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much, Mitch. It's yeah. been neat meeting you and trying out your stuff. And yeah. Thanks a bunch. Keep on doing it. <laughs> we all play our part. <laughs>